Hello, my name is Ellen Joven, and today we are going to talk about the basics of sentence diagramming. Sentence diagramming is a method that was once used in many U.S. schools to teach grammar. It has fallen out of favor, although there are still pockets of it around the country. Um, I loved it beyond all reason, and it's probably the main thing when I was in school that attracted me to grammar and made me interested in pursuing it even into adulthood. So we're going to start with the basics and then move on to increasingly more advanced elements with more sessions to follow to cover the really advanced stuff. All right, here we go. The very first thing we're going to talk about is the sentence. <laughs> this, is a, this is one of the shorter sentences that you can have. Um, so your job when you're diagramming is to decide, first of all, what the subject is and what the predicate is. You do not have a lot of choices here. Uh, if you're thinking to yourself, turtles is the subject, you are correct. And the first task of a sentence diagrammer is to draw a line. Now you can draw it. You have to decide what kind of line drawer you are. Are you going to be a free form line drawer as I just, as I am and draw a line that may or may not be totally straight? Or are you going to be a ruler user kind of person and do this kind of line? I personally prefer the messier approach, but this is entirely a matter of personal taste. So I will leave that up to you. In sentence diagramming on the horizontal line, the main elements that you must get on this line are the subject, which is turtles here. And then you decide what the predicate is and you look specifically for the verb. Here the verb is travel. So then your next task is to draw a big line going right through your horizontal line. And then on the other side, you put the verb and since there are only two words in this sentence, we have now diagrammed our first sentence and we are ready for something more advanced. So let us move along to this now four word sentence, much longer. What is the subject of the sentence? If you're thinking rabbit, you are correct. So let's draw the line again. You put the rabbit on the horizontal line on the left. And then the question is, what is the verb? In this case, as in many sentences, there's more than one verb in a, row, in a row. You have here is eating. So you just stick that whole thing on the horizontal line. And the only thing that we have left to decide now is what to do with my. Anything that points to, describes, modifies the noun, which is rabbit in this case. It's a noun and it's also the grammatical subject of the sentence. Anything that um, falls into a general bucket of adjective or that is an article such as a, an, or the, or that is a possessive adjective such as my, her, your, etc. that always goes on a nice tidy diagonal line below the subject. And you, keep, you preserve the capitalization. Um, that helps the person looking at the diagram tell what the first word in the sentence was. So I always like to keep the capitalization just as it was in the sentence. And now, we are ready for a new element. Here we have the turtles traveled enthusiastically. That word enthusiastically is an element we haven't talked about yet. Uh, perhaps you will remember that a lot of words that end in ly are adverbs. And so we have a different system for that. We take the subject again, which in this case is turtles, stick it on the left, and then the verb is traveled and then that adverb enthusiastically tells you how the turtles traveled so that goes underneath just as the adjective did under the noun in the last screen you stick it on here enthusiastically one of the challenges of a sentence diagrammer is not to run out of space i didn't plan far enough ahead so i should have done the horizontal line a little bit higher but this is okay i squeezed it in um, and then we have left the article the which is all about the turtle so that goes there and now we have completed our next diagram so let's see what else we can add here okay here we have the young tree grew quickly so what is the grammatical subject and what is the verb Tree is the subject, grew is the verb, and now things are starting to get more exciting quickly because we have multiple things to stick under the tree. This was very exciting to me as a kid 
because I just liked seeing that there was more, I don't know, the more complicated the diagram got, the fancier I felt and the more sophisticated. So we are up to a full five word sentence now. The young tree grew and then quickly is another adverb. So that goes under grew and we have our first, I think this is our first five word diagram. Anyway, it's the first one with multiple, this many complicated elements. We are ready for something new now. We are ready for the direct object. So let's start with just the stuff we already know about. Mouse is the subject and then greeted is the verb. Now, what are we going to do with that second mouse? That mouse is what you call the direct object. It receives the action of the verb and there is a system for this. You do another vertical line. You end very tidily at the horizontal line instead of going through it. And it's very important to distinguish when you're diagramming between these two types of lines. The big one separates the subject and the verb. The little one goes between a verb and in cases where they, there are direct objects between the verb and the direct object. And now the article goes below mouse as always. And we have left one element, which is yet another that one thing you realize when you diagram a lot of sentences is that many sentences have thes in them, multiple thes often. So the mouse greeted the mouse. We are zipping right along and we are ready for one more element. Okay, so now phone is the subject, fell is the verb, and you may not be surprised to see me place the her. That is what uh, people often refer to as possessive adjectives. Um, her refers to the phone, it goes under there, and then we have to decide what to do without the window. You may remember the part of speech known as the preposition. In this case, out is functioning as a preposition and out the window is a prepositional phrase. So a prepositional phrase consists of the preposition, in this case, out. And then the object of the preposition is, is the noun or in some cases a pronoun that uh, is the object of that preposition. In this case, window, that goes on a horizontal line. I was very excited in eighth grade when I learned this because doesn't this look very fancy? The prepositional phrase uh, it looks, uh, you know, kind of makes it look more complicated. So now, is that it? Her phone fell out the window. Yes, that is it. Prepositional phrases can show up in all kinds of places when you're diagramming a sentence. So here, um, I have down the hall. That's the prepositional phrase here, and you have to decide where to put it. In the last sentence, the prepositional phrase went under the verb, but here it tells you about the neighbor. So put the neighbor first, that's the subject, and what is the verb here? Made. So you put made, and then we'll put the possessive under neighbor, and we are ready for, what are we ready for? Ah, we have to do something with down the hall now. So down the hall describes the neighborhood. So we move it over here, down, and then the hall is the object. And then see my line there is a little messy. You want to be a little tidier than that, but I'm trying to write quickly and talk at the same time. Um, my neighbor down the hall made, and then what is cake? Do you see how cake receives the action of the verb? It is the direct object. And let's just double check that we haven't missed any elements. Often uh, uh, students would lose points because they would diagram the sentence and then they would forget some key word or group of words. So my, I'm going through the diagram, my neighbor down the hall made cake. We're good. Here's another prepositional phrase. Let's see where this one goes. So what is the subject and what is the verb here? We're going to put dog as the subject ran is the verb and now we know the my is going to go there let's it's always nice to do the easy things first and now we have to decide what to do with the prepositional phrase okay so we have down the hall we have a second prepositional phrase of the 13th floor so let's do the first one 
where it belongs, which is clearly under the verb because it tells you where. So that's an adverbial kind of rule. Down the hall and then of the 13th floor. So sometimes you will see prepositional phrases bunch up like this. It's uh, of the 13th floor describes the hall. It doesn't describe ran. So we're going to put it under hall of. Now look how fancy this is of the 13th. Uh Oh, see, I did not plan far enough ahead. So I'm going to have to squish now the and I'm going to have to do the number form of this instead of writing out the full word. So now we have my dog ran down the hall of the 13th floor. This is getting good. Okay, let's see what we have left. One important thing to remember is that adverbs can have a bunch of roles. They can modify verbs. What else can they modify? If you're thinking adjectives, you are right. If you are thinking they can modify other adverbs, you are right about that as well. So adverbs can modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. What is the adverb in this sentence? The adverb is really. It has that, um, that sign of the adverb, L, that common sign of the adverb, L-Y. So let's see how Delia does with her coffee. Delia is the subject. Likes is the verb. Coffee is the a direct object. And now we have to figure out what do we have left? Really strong. Strong is what part of speech? If you recognize that as an adjective, you are right. And now the question is what to do with really. So that tells you how strong. So it is an adverb modifying the adjective strong. And now we have a new structure. We're getting closer to the end. We have a few more things to do here. The dish ran away with the spoon. What goes first? Dish. What's the verb? Ran. And then the question is, what do we do with away with the spoon? There are a couple of different types of elements colliding there. Away, we can treat, we can uh, put it below as an adverb. And then we have the prepositional phrase with the spoon, with, spoon, and then the goes below. Let's just make sure we have all the words. So the dish, big line, ran, and then away is the adverb with the spoon. Okay, we are ready for a new and exciting element. This is called what we have here is called the subject complement. So I'm looking at that word helpful and, I'm, and it comes right after the verb is, which is a verb of being. Our other verbs have been filled with actions, but now we have a verb of being. And after a verb of being, you often will see an adjective or a noun, could also be a pronoun, probably less common, an adjective or a noun that refer back to, tell you something about the subject. In this case, the toilet paper is helpful. The way you treat, now this may look like two, lo, two nouns colliding with each other. Toilet is a noun, paper is a noun. Typically the way you do this, you, use, you, can, you treat toilet as an adjective. It is telling you what kind of paper. So you put that on the line below rather than sticking them together as the subject. So what kind of paper? Toilet paper. Then you do is, and then the difference between a direct object and the subject complement is that you draw a little line to the left. So we now have a new, a new element to add to our repertoire. I still remember also being very excited about this one. It just made me feel like I really knew more about what was going on with the sentences. So have I done, have I finished? Yes. Toilet paper is helpful. Now, helpful is an adjective, but you can see the same kind of construction with a noun as in this sentence. My parents are grammar nerds. So parents is the subject. And what is the verb here? Are. And then you have, I'll put the my down. That's always the easy part. I feel like a lot of these sentences have the word my in it. Um, my parents are, and then you do that same 
diagonal line towards the subject, and then you take nerds. See, in this case, it is a noun, nerds, and you put grammar below. Okay, my parents are grammar nerds. We have now diagrammed this very important sentence. And we are at the concluding slide. We're not actually going to diagram this one. I'm starting with the diagram here because I wanted to give you a sense of how you treat, um, you often see compound constructions uh, treated. So I'm gonna give you a, se a second to look at this and see if you can figure out what the, sen the original sentence that was diagrammed is. the bird, that's the subject, and then you have a compound verb. So the bird stole and hid, and then the direct object is the direct object for both of those verbs. So it's the bird stole and hid my car keys. And see that nice dotted line? That also is pretty cool for me as a kid because it makes more line variety, and the more line variety you have in your diagram, uh, the more exciting it is. So we'll work more on that. Um, in future sessions, um, just practice this stuff and uh, we'll meet again soon. Bye-bye.